What's up, guys? Uh, I'm back. Uh, I'm gonna do my. I'm a little late. I'm gonna do my UFC Fight Night 165, I think. Uh, Frankie Edgar versus uh, Chang Sung, Korean Zombie. Um, I'm gonna start off with the main card predictions. Man, this is an awesome, awesome show. Um, yeah, we didn't end up getting uh, Korean Zombie versus Brian Ortega, but we were promised this fight a while back. If you do remember, Frankie was supposed to fight Korean Zombie, and I think Frankie got hurt. And uh, Yair Rodriguez came in and did the the craziness uh, of that that elbow in the last five seconds of the fifth round is awesome. But yeah, I'm obviously I'm gonna start off with the the fight to start off the fight night. You know, from the bottom to the top, uh, we got part uh, Joan Young versus Mark Andre uh, Bichelet. I'm gonna go Mark Andre Bichelet just based on uh, has more fights, more experience. Uh, and I think, yeah, this is, um, I got him winning that fight. Then you got Jung Dohan versus Mike Rodriguez. We haven't seen Mike Rodriguez in a minute. And I'd love to see what he's able to do. And, you know, I think he's going to take that one. And then we got an interesting one, which one really surprised me. Doi Hoi Choi, or Choi Doi Ho, or whatever. Uh, I call him the Korean Superboy, uh, versus Charles Dornin. I'm not going to act like I know Charles Dornin. But we haven't seen uh, Korean Superboy in a minute since the Jeremy Stevens loss. He's on a, I think, yeah, he's on a two-fight losing streak. Uh, I understood he had to do a little military stuff. And I think the reason why he's fighting um, on this card is because it's so close to home. They let him do it. Uh, I, I like the fight. Um, you know, 9-2. and two. I, I haven't seen a fight. So I'd have to see what he's able to do. But I think I'm going Korean Superboy on that one. And then the co-main event, oh my god, this is such an interesting one, bro. This is the one you guys have to check out, bro. It's such a good fucking fight. Uh, Vulcan Ozemir versus Alexander Rurek. Similar opponents, they knocked out in the first round, Jimmy Manoa. But man, Vulcan Ozemir has been so impressive to me. Uh, and the way he dismantled the Lear Latifi, and even though he lost, Loss to Dominic Reyes, the way he handled Dominic Reyes, even in in a true defeat when he lost Anthony Smith, he looked really really good in that fight. Volkan Ozdemir has been, I think, got pushed to a title fight too early, even though he was on a three fight, uh, I think win streak or something like that. Uh, I remember him being Misha Serkinov and uh, Ovin Saint Pru and then Jimmy Manoa, and you know he he did it very impressive fashion. So I I, I understand. Um, why some people was like, well, he's already prepared for that fight. But when he fought Daniel, just it did seem like he was ready, not only just for the forward pressure and somebody not being scared of his power. I think he just wasn't ready uh, also for the wrestling. And Daniel applied that wrestling, just applied that ground and pound, and just, just ended it. Bro, he could have finished it in the first round if he had enough time, if he got there with naked choke in. But, you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, in my opinion, um, DC, he always beats eight, uh, Hard Knocks or Black Zillions or whatever they call themselves now. But uh, but if you look at his fights throughout uh, or since the DC fight, his wrestling has improved at a high level, bro. I mean, like at a, like at a crazy level, man. Uh, Anthony Smith, black belt in jiu-jitsu, really, really, really good jiu-jitsu. And he was able to stop, you know, stuff his takedown and then take him down. And I think that's what ended him getting, you know, choked out. Dominic Reyes, a guy that's wrestled before, actually, out wrestled, you know, Vol no Vulcan out wrestled Dominic, and Dominic has a wrestling background, you know, which was crazy. Um, and then the way he d dismantled the Lil Latifi, waited for him to explode, and just destroyed him. I, I mean, like I've never seen anyone really do that since maybe what, Ryan Bader. I'm trying to think who's really destroyed a Lil Latifi, man. Uh, Corey Anderson kind of just tired him out, but it was just like through the decision. It wasn't like impactful, but like, my God, man, Vulcan Ozemir looked amazing. He's, uh, you know, his last fight and then just his last few other fights. Now, Alexander Rick, I've only seen one fight from him. It was a Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Manoa fight. And oh my God, what he did to Jimmy Manoa was insane, bro. He killed him. Now, let's look at the facts. Jimmy, I, I I have a lot of respect for Jimmy Manoa. I think he, at you know, at a point of his career, I consider I consider maybe he might be challenging for a title, 
Um, and it was not too long ago, man. It was like, what, two, I think, what, two years ago now? Um, he had knocked out Ovin St. Preux and Corey Anderson. And it was just too beautiful first. I'm like, I mean, you, got, you guys got to check out that um, that Corey. An- no, no. The Ovin St. Preux knockout was insane. But ever since he lost to, like, um, it, he did lose. And he, he did get finished by Rumble Johnson, too. And he, he did get, lose to Alexander Gustafson. But but after that Vulcan Ozdemir loss, he just wasn't the same. And I, I don't know if it was the mileage on him, but he... And then he got outworked by Juan Bolshevich, a guy he beat before. And then Tiago Santos just took his body, man. Took his body. No, took his heart. And then Alexander Rick took his soul. He really took that man's soul. Like, I, I was just... The way his head, like, bounced on on the floor it was just insane. Um, but what I've noticed about, and some of the highlights I've seen of him, he hasn't been able to do that to his other opponents, which is interesting. Like, just that kind of explosive power. So, I think what he did to Jimmy Manoa, I, I don't want to sound disrespectful, but that was something that, you know, he. I don't want to say he couldn't. You know, it's one of those things, just he, Jimmy Manoa was at that point of his career where shots like that are going to hurt him, you know? And, and, yeah, and that's why he retired, so... It is what it is. We're not here to talk about Jimmy Man. We're here to talk about these two killers. Um, I think Vulcan Ozdemir has the advantage in the grappling department. I haven't seen uh, Alexander get uh, taken down or even someone attempt to take down on him. But one thing we got to look at is, in my in, in my humble opinion, I think Vulcan has great, great hands. But re- did the way Alexander re- uh, wreck set up that that high kick with the it was beautiful but i think vulcan has the better hands i think he's the i think even i think he's he's the better mma kickboxer in there if you know what i'm saying um so i'm gonna go vulcan ozdemir but we're gonna find out a lot about alexander rick man it's it's a really really great co-main event it's honestly this is more compelling i love vulcan ozdemir i'm a big fan of him more compelling then maybe the main event to me, Loki. Uh, and now we're up to the main event. Uh, Frank Edgar versus Korean Zombie Chang Song. Uh, it's an interesting fight. Um, I think this is going to be, well, you know, Frankie, and he's taking this on short notice. Frankie needs to, and I understand, Chang, uh, Korean Zombie has great jiu jitsu, you know, really just elite level submissions. What Frankie has to do is, you know, and Frankie's so good at mixing it up, using his distance, you know, just being just there, you know, not getting hurt, just going, you know, and, um, you know, applying his jabs. You know, I think he has some of the best boxing in the division. Now, I think, obviously, Calvin Qatar, Shane Burgos, those guys have better boxing than him. Um, but just, you know, his ability to mix it up and mix takedowns, in, it's still he still does it at a high level. So if I was to say... Could Frankie take him down? I think so. The problem is, does Frankie want to take him down? Does he want to be in those grappling situations with a you know Korean zombie? We noticed it against Brian Ortega. He did not want to do that. So let's say Frankie can't take him down, right? Can Frankie outbox Chang Sun? I, I believe so if it was a pure boxing match. But this is MMA, and just things are different. So I think at the end of the day, Korean Zombie is trying to knock him out, obviously. He's going to go forward and just throw that punch. And and he could flatline him. But I believe... And, I, I'm, and I'm honest with this. Chang Sung can really knock this dude out, man. After what I saw what he did to Renato Mocanio, bro, this shit was stunning, man. It was it was like they didn't even... They weren't even supposed to be in the fucking same division. Like, it, it was that bad of a knock. I was, like, just shocked, like, how he just hit him. And it's... And the way he does it, man, hands really, really low, and it's just so unpredictable. Man, he just clocked him, just clocked him. But I think if Frankie's just really smart, keep his chin tucked, you know, just really smart, you know, rolls with those punches, He, I think he can win this fight in a five-round decision, I think, just by being the smarter fighter. Uh, it's an interesting fight because Frankie was supposed to fight Corey Sanhagen, but I, I can see it's it's... 
it's a good fight. It's just, it's a little too late, if you know what I'm saying. Or it's just not as good as the Brian Ortega fight. I want to see how Brian is after the Max Holloway fight, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I really do enjoy this fight. But the problem is, I don't want either of these guys to lose, man. I really want to see Korean Zombie versus um, uh, Alexander Volkanovsky one day. Or, or just seeing Korean Zombie fight for a title one more time. Or, you know, Korean Zombie versus Abi. Or Yair again. Or even Jeremy Stevens. I want to see him progress at Featherweight. Uh, and I also don't want to see Frank Yeager leave Featherweight as a loser, man. I don't want to see him go to uh, 135 with, with a knockout loss on his record. So it's a really hard for, uh, fight for me to pick. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Frank Edgar by decision, uh, because that's what I'm. Ho- you know, I'm hoping for. I don't want to hope. If if Korean Zombie won by decision, I'd be okay with it. But I don't. Korean Zombie's just not that kind of fighter. I've seen Frankie do that, pull it out like that. So I'm gonna go Frankie. He's tough as fuck, man. People must have forgot. People might think he's shot, and you know he has too much mileage on him. I think Frankie has one more run. If you look at Jose Aldo, the way he looked at uh, Bantamweight and these Bantamweight fighters uh i think frankie he can challenge someone like an aljamain sterling uh he could even give a, a pedro munoz problems or now peter Yan's a different story i don't want him touching peter Yan. but i i i believe even and he, him versus henry cejudo would be super interesting but yeah uh you guys should check out the card um yeah i guess this is the last um prediction show i'm doing for the year Go check out, I'm still going to do, go check out my review show um, I did of 245. And then I'm going to do a year-end show, fight of the year, fighter of the year, female fighter of the year, comeback fighter of the year, uh, knockout of the year, submission of the year, kind of stuff like that. I'm going to do that kind of show or that kind of video. And uh, yeah, man, see y'all.